hey hi guys welcome back to my channel this is Vishal so agenda of this tutorial is that I'm going to show you how to install a mule anypoint studio on your local machine then we'll build a simple hello world mule application later on we'll see how to consume an external web service in mule so let's go ahead and see how to install a mule anypoint studio so open your browser and type https colon www.mulesoft.com forward slash lp forward slash dl forward slash studio and hit enter so it will take you to the main download page Now keep in mind that this AnyPoint Studio comes with the one month trial of an enterprise edition of Mule Runtime Server. So that's the reason here you can see a download 30 day Mule trial label. Now here you have to enter some details like selecting the operating system. So I'm gonna select it as a Windows then go to the the second option is like it's, it will ask you whether it's a 64 bit or 32 bit then click on this I'm gonna click on 64 bit then enter your personal details like I'll enter my name as Vishal last name my gmail id so for time being I give my company name as test job developer job title as developer and my contact number then go down click this checkbox and hit the download button so it will start your download so once it is downloaded go to your download location and So once it is downloaded, go to your downloaded location. So you'll find it as a zip file. So extract the zip file. Then here you can see AnyPoint Studio app application. So click on this so you can open your AnyPoint Studio. So I have already downloaded the AnyPoint Studio on my machine. So I'm gonna go and open my studio. So this is how you see when you open the AnyPoint Studio for the first time and this is the welcome page. Here you can see some options like creating a project, open the existing project. If you want to check some documentations, you can go ahead and click on this documentation link. Like I said before, if you want to add a community runtime once your one month trial of enterprise edition expires, you can go ahead and click on this button or you may go into the help button. Help bar and install the community runtime under your studio so let's close this project close this welcome page and create a new project so go to the file new 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 project so click on this give a name as we are going to create a hello world application so i'll give you the name it as a hello world App. now here you can see it has by default taken as a mule server of enterprise edition so you don't need to make any changes over here if you want to make this as a maven project before that you'll have to configure a maven on your machine then click on this checkbox and it will be created as a maven project so for time being let's keep that click on next Keep a note of one thing that Mule application does require Java 1.8 so make sure you have it on your local machine. So I have already installed the Java JDK 1.8 on my machine so I don't need this so it will automatically take the location. So again click on next and finish. So here is the project structure of our application has been created. Here you can see there is a by default XML file that is a flow XML file is created along with some properties file. 
on the right hand side if you click on this here you can see a mule palette here, here where you will find multiple components like connectors transformers filters and a lot more so we'll cre we will create a flow which returns hello world as a response when it is hit by browser or some other tools like postman so go to the mule palette and search for a flow component you can see a flow component just click on it and drag it into your canvas so canvas is nothing but the visual representation of your flow now here you can see there are three tabs one is a message flow global elements and configuration xml message flow is nothing but your visual representation it's a graphical representation of your flow if you go to the configuration xml you can see the same flow in xml format you can make the changes in XML format also, the same will be reflected in your canvas representation and vice versa. If you hit on click on this global element tab, you can see you can configure some global elements here and maybe you can configure some global elements here which will be visible across your application. So I'll go to my canvas representation again. Now, in order to allow your meme application to be accessed through meme web resources, you have to expose your web service through some host and port. And in order to do that, you need a component which is called HTTP component. So HTTP component is basically nothing but it sends or receives a request over HTTP or HTTP protocol. So it can, there are two cases of there are two use cases of HTTP component. One, it can be act as a listener or it can act as a request connector. In our case, we want it to be act as a listener. So I just click it on the HTTP component and drag it to the source section. Now, in case if you want to, if in case if you want HTTP component to be act as a request connector, then you should drag it into the process section. Now I. I click on the HTTP uh, connector and open the configuration tab of it and let me configure the listener part of it so click on this green symbol here so the global element properties dialog appears so under general tab here you can see you can configure protocol host and port so by default it takes HTTP protocol host as all interface and 8081 as a port you can change the details but for now, I keep it as it is. In case if you are using HTTPS protocol, you can go ahead and change the TLS or SSL encryption settings. But for now, we don't need HTTPS protocol. We want it HTTP only. So I click OK. And my listener is configured. In basic settings, you can see there is a path value. It indicates how it how your application can be accessed through browser so let me give path value something like get message so I click save the HTTP connector now the second component we need is set payload so I click on this and drag to the canvas set payload is nothing but it allows you to set the payload or something output which you want to return to the browser so in my case i want to return to the browser that is hello world so under the value tab value section i go and change the value as hello world So under value, there can be different things you can set here. It can be a mule expression or it can be a string literally which you want to return. So for now, I have given it as a string literal. So I save it. Now let's add a last component of our application to handle logging. So let's search for a logger and add it into a canvas right after set payload so that's and here you can see the direct the automatic connection is formed between set payload and logger and in logger in a message you can set whatever the message you want to print on your console or on a log file so i just say this is as 
I give it as a hello word app. I save. So here is our flow is ready. So let's go ahead and start the application. So click on the application, go to the run ads and run it as a mule application. So I click on this. So you can see the console is started. It will start deploying your application in Mule Runtime Server. You can see it is initializing the app. Once it is deployed, here you can see your app name and the status as deployed. Now go to the browser and check, hit the URL and see what you get in return. So I go fine, go to my browser and hit localhost 8081 forward slash. The path we have given here is get message. When I hit enter, I can see hello but it returns to, to the browser. And if you go to the console here also you can see the logging message we have added. So here you can see this is as a Hello World app. So this is how you can create your Mule application. Now let's try to consume a RESTful service in our Mule application. So I have got a um, public API provided by MuleSoft that's called American Flights. Uh, so I, for timing I got two gate endpoints. One is a flights and second is a flights with the query parameter as a destination. So this is a public API. I'll provide these two API links in my description box. So let's uh, let's see how it gets how it returns or what it returns. So I just copy this and try to hit from my browser to see what actual response I do get. So if I hit the first endpoint called flight, so it will return all the records of flight which contains some in which contains in the form of JSON, JSON structures like there are some parameters over here like ID, code, price, departure date, origin, destinations, empty seats along with the child, child component inside it called plane which has a type and the total set similar. Okay. Now the second endpoint is like we can pass a query parameter to it. So I just keep query, query parameter like destination or LX. Now destination, if I give LX, so it will filter based on the destination and it will return only those records which has the destination as LX. So let's try to implement or consume this web service in our mule application and see how do we get the response. Since we have two endpoints, one is the flights and one with the destination as a query parameter, we'll have to create a two mule flow. So to handle each endpoint, there would be a different flow. So let's create a first flow. So I'll bring my first component into a flow called HTTP connector. I just drag it and extract this and put it into a canvas. Keep one thing in mind that you don't need to bring flow component every time. So whenever you bring a first component of your flow like HTTP connector so it will be automatically enveloped inside a flow so you can save your effort over there so the HTTP listener is already configured for this since we have taken it uh, taking it from the earlier flow so it is already configured so I am gonna give this path like get flights okay the allowed method has get and so the listener part is configured let's try to configure a request part where we're going to hit a request to that cloud hub url with the phone and let's try to grab the response from it and return back to the browser so in this case we again need a http connector but in this case we want it as a request connector instead of listener so when you want it as a request connector just pull it and drag it into the process section open the properties of it you can just rename it like i give http request connector 
fine now let's try to configure it so I click on this now in the request connector we will have to provide a protocol is already taken as the HTTP and a host and port you will have to provide now if you see the API carefully you will have a host name here this is the host name so I just copy the host name from the site and paste it into the global element properties so I just paste it the port number is by default 80 for the cloud hub now the base path base path is nothing but this api slash flights so i am going to copy this from here and put it into here okay you can just skip this slash and press ok so we have created a connector configuration now here you can give path as a one first power slash and the method as get since we are calling the get method I have configured this right now let's try to run this flow so right click on the application go to the run as run as mule application so it will ask to save it I click ok start deploying my application Okay, my application is de deployed successfully. Let's go to the browser and type out URL like localhost 8081, then you get flights. Right? And hit enter. Now you can see it is returning the whole response. So basically, we are trying to do is like we have enveloped the entire RESTful web service under our endpoint called GetFlies, and we are trying to call that mules of public API with an endpoint called flights. Now you can see over here, since we have configured it just for one endpoint. Under this, you can go here. As you can see, we have configured for flights. So that's why it's returning the entire response over here. Now let's try to consume a second endpoint and create a flow for it. So let me again create a second flow for that. Let me shut down my application. Now again, we need a HTTP connector. So I just pull it again and drag it. At the bottom so that it should it will create a new flow for me again the listener configuration will be the same now you'll have to give a second path value will be the difference so I call it as a get flights by destination So this is my path method would be the same like it okay now the another one is a request configuration so I just pull it into this process section property has been open so I give a name as a request connector now we have already configured a request connector for the earlier flow so we can utilize the same for this so you can go ahead inside the list you can see we have already configured the request connector so you just I just click on that so that it will be automatically automatically used for my flow now inside a path again I just have to give like this and method as a gate now 
keep in mind one thing we have to add here is that we are passing a query parameter so we'll have to add this as a query matter query parameter or we will have to mention that we are passing one query parameter called destination so you can go down here and there is a button called add parameter click on this it will say there is a list here you can say whether it's a query parameter you are a parameter or what so for now we have it is a query parameter so click on that what's the name of the query parameter you want to give it's a destination now you want to give the mass value of the query parameter keep in mind that first HTTP free connector which is acting as a listener so along with that it it brings some properties so when it comes it brings some properties that is nothing but the input properties which in mule language we call inbound properties inside inbound properties you will find the query parameter so there is a mule expression to get the query button query parameter you can go to the message section now type dot and get into the input inbound properties here you can see the inbound properties now again dot inside a single code you'll have to type http dot query dot params then go outside that code and type the query parameter name you're passing so i'm passing as a destination all right i save it so this destination will be passed to the request so that the second endpoint will be called and the result will be filled up based on the destination now the endpoint is ready i'm gonna run this project again run as new application click ok to save Since my application is deployed, let's go back to the browser and see if both API is the endpoints are working. Now, first endpoints as we have already configured it, so it should be working as expected. Now let's see the second endpoint. Get flights by destination. Now I give the query parameter as a destination as SFO. Now you can see it's filtering based on the destination. Now you can see only I'm getting only results based for the destination SFO. Now I just change it to LX. Let's see what do you get. So it should filter based on the destination called LX. So here this is the way you can pass the query parameter and consume a restful web service. In the next next tutorial, we'll expand this topic and we'll try to consume more endpoints with method like post, put, delete, and by creating a different flow. Thank you.